paid about 10 days with Dizzy. Benny Carter, Betty Carter, Nancy, Nancy Wilson. This list can go on forever. <laughs> Today's guest has certainly done a lot, as you can hear from that opening clip. I'm Jason Heath. This is Contrabass Conversations, and we are chatting with Lyle Atkinson. And I went to a neo bass ensemble performance while I was in New York City. Jay Starks, who plays with the ensemble, invited me. Lyle founded this group, and he's been on the jazz scene in New York for decades. He's played with, as you heard, some of the biggest names in the business. And prior to founding the neo bass ensemble, Lyle actually played in the New York Bass Violin Choir. So he mentions this briefly as we chat. I really hope you enjoy this conversation. And I'm going to give a shout out to our sponsors here. If I actually ran any ads, they would be longer than the length of this episode. So we will not do that. But I'd like to thank Diderio Strings, A440, Steve Swan String Bass, Upton Bass. And we've got a old, a former sponsor back on board, the Bass Violin Shop. So you will be hearing from all of them in future longer episodes. So here we go with this conversation backstage with Lyle Atkinson. With Lyle Atkinson, and I'm uh, really enjoying this performance here. And tell me about some of the history of this group. When did you start this group? Well, it's about 25 years. About 25 years ago. 25 years ago. Wow. What inspired you to start the bass ensemble? Well, I was in one before, uh, entitled the New York Bass Violin Choir. I've heard of that ensemble. All right. Well, I was one of the players. Oh, wonderful. Okay. And who else was in that group? Okay. It was Richard Davis. It was Ron Carter, me, Milt Hinton, and Michael Fleming, Sam Jones, and Bill. Okay. Well, Bill that... Lee. Bill Lee, Spike's father. Oh, So, nice. so just so you know who he is. Mm -hmm. nice. Okay. And it's a drag to have to mention Spike's name so people don't know who he is. <laughs> but... You know, Bill Lee's hit Spike's father, and he was a genius. Mm -hmm. He wrote operas, jazz operas, beautiful, you know, beautiful music. And I was always inspired. I always wanted to play with a, another bass player, but not another bass player in the rhythm section, mm -hmm. you know, out front on stage. Mm -hmm. So between all of that, here we are. I, I'm fascinated by the arrangements, and we could even go back to the to the bass violin choir with all, all those players, those great players that you're talking about. How, who who wrote the arrangements for that group? That was uh, Spike. That was uh, that was Spike Lee's dad that was doing that. Okay, cool. So t so are you playing some of these same arrangements here, or oh, are no, people? No. This is all new. Ah, all right, you're doing these. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, I mean, as good as Bill ranges. You know, I got a little bit me too. Yeah, for sure. You know? <laughs> so uh, basically, you know, he was an influence of me, mm -hmm. but I always had that sound in mind also. So when he called me, he, you know, he kind of made it more obvious. 
kind of a thing, you know. Yeah. But I was going to do it anyway. Yeah. It's it's a challenge to write for all these different bass voices, you know, and get them all balanced. But you you do a wonderful job with it. Thank you. Yeah. Well, outside of the bass ensemble, you've done so much playing. Just tell folks a little bit about some of the other people you've played with over the years. Well, we have. I played about ten days with Dizzy, Benny Carter, Betty Carter, Nancy, Nancy Wilson. This list can go on forever. <laughs> I played with a lot of singers for some reason, yeah. um, you know. But uh, and and you like working with singers in the in the bass ensemble here too. Well, every so often, if if I hear a voice that I think fits, you know, I've had different singers in here. Uh, not that many, mm-hmm. but a few. Actually, this is her first concert, you know. So she, she's a little nervous. So, <laughs> but anyway, you've uh, and you've recorded a bunch of albums with the group over the years, several albums over uh, the years did, with well, the Neo Bass Ensemble, right? Well, no, bass, no, just three. Three. Well, that's that's a you know. But I had uh, I had to put the, re- the recordings out. Yeah. Because yeah. people don't understand this. Mm-hmm. They, they don't, maybe half those people out there don't know what's going on. <laughs> well, I'm a bass player too, so I'm, yeah, I'm one, one of us. They, okay. <laughs> All right. So, what's your, what's your sentiments on what's going on tonight? And, and what, what do you hear that's different? from most bass players. I hear many things that are different. Uh, one thing that I think is, is really interesting is you've got the traditional rhythm section with bass back there too, accompanying well, the group. Right. Yeah. So what's your, what's your feelings about that? You know, how you feel? Because a lot of bass players don't want to play with a rhythm section. They're so jammed up. Uh, well, that's a bad word. I mean, when, if it's jammed up. <laughs> Maybe it's like some confusion. Sure. That kind of a thing in reference to uh, why is, you know, why he got all these bass players, and I play bass, okay, without calling any names. Uh, we had, you know, some people, w- one person that I thought would understand it, and he came to me, and, then, you know, he came to me, and he said, "Why is he playing?" I said, "This is, you know," and I hate and I hate to describe it like this, but uh, he wanted to know why doing his solo, you know, bass players. I said, "Don't think of his bass as, uh, you know, think of it as a band. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, this is a band, mm-hmm. like any other band." Different instrumentation, but a band, a unit. Like, like, a, like a big band. Like, right. It's like we would ha- be right. having saxophones right. backing up. We'd be having trombones and backgrounds. Yeah, but the That's... point is, the bass player, you see, what you don't understand was the bass player was only in the rhythm section. You know, I've played in a lot of rhythm sections. You know, at the time was for me to play some. You know, it was time for, it was time for me to play unless somebody accompanied me. So here we are. Here we are, and here you are playing those solo lines and directing the band up there uh, from from the stool with the bow. And it's great to hear the bass playing the melody. We've got the bass playing the melody. We've got the bass playing the harmonies. We've got all the interaction. We've got the bass right. lines. So we have all these layers of bass. Well, don't think of them as bass lines if if they got their bow in their hand. Right. There we go. Think of them as a, no, just another melody. Uh-huh. <laughs> all right. Well, I, I appreciate you spending some time and chatting with me. It's an honor to meet you and be here and hear you play, and congratulations on what you're doing. Thank you.
Thanks for chatting. And Jay, thank you for setting this up. Those clips that you heard are from the Neo Bass Ensemble, and you can check out those albums that they're from and learn more about the ensemble and Lyle at Lyle's website, which is lyleatkinson.com. So thanks again, Jay. Great to meet you in person. Although I guess we did meet at ISB briefly a couple years ago, but really great to chat with you and Lyle and meet everybody else in the group. By the way, the other folks in the group that night were, I'm just calling this up here, they were, so we had Lyle, we had Jay Starks, we also had Karen Atkinson, Philip Wadkins, Sam McPherson, John Robinson, Mimi Jones, and rhythm section members Paul West, Richard Wyans, and Charles McPherson Jr. Very cool, and I hope to get a chance to check them out sometime in the future. Contrabass Conversations is produced by Michael Cooper, Steve Hinchy, Trevor Jones, and Mitch Mooring. If you're looking for a bass, Mitch Mooring makes beautiful basses down in the Dallas area. Learn more at his newly designed, redesigned website, MitchMooring.com. Also, thank you to Krista Copper for archiving and cataloging all the topics that we talk about on the podcast. I'm your host, Jason Heath. We'll see you again soon for more life on the low end of the spectrum.